Wait, wait, wait. What assignment? Oh crap. I've got an assignment due today. Two hours later. Well, I am making progress. Kinda. Oh yeah, I had to make a YouTube video. Forget the assignment. After watching Spider-Man No Way Home, I decided to re-watch the first two movies. And it reminded me of the coolest gadget from that movie, Edith's Glasses, that Tony Stark gives Peter Parker. I wanted one. So I went on to Amazon to find Edith's Glasses, and surprisingly, it was there. So I bought one. I was pretty impressed by how similar it looked to the movie version, yet it was disappointing that it didn't come with the cool heads-up display in it. That, however, is not a problem that can't be solved. So I took an OLED display and connected it to an ESP32 dev kit. I chose the ESP32 because it has integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which would allow me to add some features to it. As I plugged in the OLED and tried to mount it on the glass, I came to realize the reason why smart glass technology is not so widespread yet. The optics problem. The display itself was never the problem. There are quite advanced displays with good picture quality, but it is so difficult to display something so close to your eye while keeping the glass transparent. I did look into these cool transparent OLEDs, but they weren't fully transparent and had the same problem. You won't be able to see it when it is placed so close to your eye. Of course, I could use a lens and see it clearly, but now you lose the clarity of the background. It's no longer transparent. After doing some research, I could only find two good designs to make this work. One of them looks like a rectangular prism, which has the display on one side. Light rays pass through a glass inclined at 45 degrees, and then pass through a lens after reflecting from a mirror, and then finally reflect into your eye. The other one has the display mounted separately. The light rays reflect on the mirror, passes through the lens, and then finally reflects from a transparent glass. But I didn't like either of them. They were bulky and always had something protruding out from the glass. I wanted something that wouldn't have anything sticking out from the glass. After hours of tinkering with different arrangements, I finally figured out a way to make it. I could place the display parallel to the rims of the glass and have a mirror reflected on the lens. From trial and error, I found that 1.5x magnifying lens works the best. Because the display was getting reflected twice on the lens and the glass, I had to cut out the glass and replace it with the lens. My final optical arrangement looked like this. If you can read the display clearly, then you know what to do. After having my optics figured out, I had to design a PCB for the project. For that, we'll head over to the sponsor of this video, Altium Designer. Altium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design software. It offers all features needed for professional PCB design and enables you to collaborate with ease. If you're interested in creating PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface, do check out the link below for a free trial. Once I made my schematics, I designed the PCB and had it manufactured. Now soldering the SMD components is the easiest part. Yeah, I wish. This is my first time soldering a fully surface mount PCB of this complexity, especially soldering the delicate ribbon cable. On the surface, it looks pretty easy. Use a stencil, apply solder paste, and carefully place the components, and then blow hot air to solder it. And it is that easy, until it simply wouldn't turn on. And that is when the true limits of your patience is tested. I had to test each and every connection, check if I fried out a chip, or figure out which component I accidentally swapped, or if I simply blew away a diode with hot air gun. After doing all of that, I used an eraser cut at 60 degrees as a wedge to glue the mirror on the display. Now, the moment of truth. It works! Now all I need is an enclosure for this, but I have no experience in 3D printing or 3D modeling. Turns out that's a pretty lame excuse, so I hopped on to YouTube and went over tutorials to learn enough Fusion 360 to design a case for this project. It took me hours to learn to use the tools and features, but after a while I was getting a hang of it, and soon before I knew it, I became a pro at this. I did it! Look at how professional that looks! I then loaded the STL files onto my Creative the Ender 3 and got my case printed. When I put the printed case together and tried to mount it on the glass, I found there were a lot of errors in the design and it simply wouldn't fit. Turns out you cannot become a pro in a day. So I took my rotary tool and started correcting the design flaws so that it would fit on the glass. And done. It did make it a little ugly, but at least it fits. Now all I had to do was to solder in the touchpad and the battery and put both the PCBs in their appropriate places in the case and close it up. And then finally mounted the device to the glass. 
Now let me wear the glass and we'll talk about the features. As of now, I've written the code for it to show a simple menu of apps, which you can navigate using these three capacitive touch sensors. The first app is Date and Time. It collects the data from the internet. Next, there is a weather app which shows temperature, humidity, and pressure. And lastly, there is a news feed which gets headlines from BBC. Also, most importantly, it reads notifications from your smartphone. Now this feature is pretty helpful while driving a car. I can read my WhatsApp messages and maps direction hands-free. Now I know this isn't a whole lot of features. I wanted to add face and text recognition, but that would require me to use a more advanced microprocessor like the Raspberry Pi Zero which I currently do not have. However, I do plan on making an upgraded version with face recognition and text translation. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.